so you want to get up to speed on Stellarium really fast? This video will show you how. Let's take a look. Welcome to my video on installing and using Stellarium. This is a quick start guide for a simple program, something to get you up to speed really, really fast. Uh, it's not meant to be in depth. There's lots of good information out there available if, if you want to do that. But let's get you started and let's get you started really fast. The first thing you want to do is you want to run over to Stellarium.org. Once you're there, you should see the screen uh, like you see right here and you're going to want to pick which version you want. There's two different versions for Windows, although I'm not sure why you'd be running 32-bit. There's Mac OS, there's Linux, there's even a Stellarium web. But what we're going to do is we're just going to download and install Stellarium. So I'm going to click on the 64-bit. That's going to take just a minute to download. Once it's downloaded, we are going to run it and install the software using all the defaults. Now that it's downloaded, we will click it. Really simple. Yes. Link. Accept. And it installs quite quickly. Now, Normally you'd think, let's launch Stellarium and uh, go ahead and get started. But I'm not going to do that just yet because we need another piece of information. So I'm going to click Finish. And let's go over to gps-coordinates.net slash gps-coordinates-converter. In here, I can put the address that I'm observing from and click Get GPS Coordinates. It's going to get me two different sets of coordinates. This one in de uh, decimal degrees and this one in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Now the reason I went here instead of just like Google Maps is because Google Maps just gives you this one, the decimal degrees. What we really need is this one, the degrees, minutes, and seconds. Now make a note of this and I'll show you why here in just a minute. But once you have your GPS coordinates, we can go and we can launch Stellarium. Now, there's a shortcut on the desktop here. And then we need to put our GPS information in. Now, one of the things that I found difficult is switching back and forth because you notice you can't get to the taskbar, you can't really minimize it or anything. So what we do is we come down here and we go to the full screen mode toggle right here. You can also press F11 to make that work. But once you do that, now it's in a window so that you can move it around and use it just like you would any other program. So now if we go back to our GPS location, and we go here, you can go to this location window over on the left. It's the top icon, or you can press F6. Now, here, by default, it's got get location from network, and it's fairly close. It's a couple hours away, but it got me in the right ballpark. If you uncheck that, you can then put in your actual coordinates. These are actually the coordinates to a museum here in town. Whoop, that's 42. They have a nice little uh, field where I can go observe the moon and you know all that kind of good stuff. So 694 and that's actually 44. And then down here that is 95, 
it's a little persnickety about where you click and where you can delete stuff and to edit all of this. So you have to be kind of careful. Four, five, six. And then I can call this. And then I happen to know that I am about uh, 110 meters, roughly, elevation. And then this will use the current location as default. So once that's done, I should be in the correct place. And you can verify that right down here. See where it says plus 30, 42, 44, 95, 33, 04. If you look at that, that should match these numbers over here. Okay. So now we can go back to Stellarium and we can just full screen it this way. That way you've still got access to the taskbar. You can use it as a regular uh, program. So now that we have that, you can actually set the date and time. Now, obviously, we're not going to be out in this field viewing with the sun right up here. So we're going to want to set the date and time. And you do that right here. Like that. Now you've got your date here and your time. So let's go to where it's a little darker. So that's easy enough. Now, if you want to move around, you don't necessarily always want to be looking at south. So as you can see, the date that I picked, Venus, Saturn, Jupiter, will all be in a nice little line on this date at this time. Okay. So you can move all the way around. There's the moon. There's Uranus. And then we're right back where we started. So you can move up, down. You can even kind of look at the ground. And you do that by just click the mouse, hold it down, left mouse button, and move it around. Okay? So you can now make the make the sky actually move at different speeds currently as you, if you look down at the clock it is moving in real time so every second everything moves what it would move in a particular second but you've got speed up and reverse down here so if you wanted to speed up you notice that the time starts moving much faster then you can click the play button and it goes back to one second at a time then you can click the back button and it starts moving backwards. Notice the time is counting down. The more you click it, the faster it moves. Then you can go back to the play button. This button right here will switch it to the current time. So now we're going to go back to daylight and we click that. Now if you want to watch it get dark, and there we go. Okay, so next, one of the things I like to do to help me navigate around is to come down here and to turn on both constellation lines and constellation labels. That way I can see exactly where I'm looking in the sky instead of just a bunch of points. Uh, most of the time I can recognize where I am, but it's a lot easier when you have the constellation lines and names. Uh, just right there ready to go. So for example, right here, you can see Orion. And if I go fast a little forward a little bit, you can watch Orion rise. And there we go. And then I can click the mouse and move and center in. And next interesting thing here is you can use the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in and out to get close to something and to move further away. And that helps you zoom in and out on certain areas of the sky where you want to view. So let's say I wanted to find uh, the Great Nebula in Orion. Now obviously it's, it's right there. But let's say I didn't know it was there. I'm way back here. I didn't have my lines on or anything and I wanted to find it. So you can come down here and you can go into the search window. I'm going to press F3. And here I'm going to go Orion Nebula. 
So there's the Orion Nebula or the Great Orion Nebula. So let's click that. It centers the screen on the target. It puts these little flashing, not really flashing, but moving in and out brackets to show you where it is. And it fills the screen over here on the left with a bunch of information. Now, getting started, you're really not going to use most of this. But what's really important is right here, you have the rise time, the transit time, and those two you will use quite a bit. The rise time tells you what time it's going to come up and be visible above the horizon. Now, keep in mind, that's assuming, you know, a flat horizon, no trees. So at 20 hours, 18 minutes, or excuse me, 11 minutes, I can't even read the screen. Um, Orion is going to rise. Now, if you look down here, we're at 2117. So if you back up, to 2011. Look at there. 2011, 37, 2011, and it is right at the horizon. So that's your rise time. The transit time is telling you what time it's going to go across the top center. So let's transit 2, weirdo 42. So let's go 2 o'clock. That is as high in the sky as it's going to get. So that is even between rise and set. Now the reason that number is important is because the closer to the transit time you get, the better the viewing is going to be. Because viewing stuff at the horizon is always worse because you've got uh, a lot more atmosphere to go through. You've got a lot more garbage in the atmosphere to go through. So the closer to top dead center you can get, the better. So in this case, that's two hours. Now, if you're an astrophotographer, top dead center is also the worst time you could get because that's when your mount has to swing around and go the other direction. But anyway, more on that in other videos. The set time, is at 749. So if we come down here, four, five, six, seven. So let's go to seven. Whoop. 49. So now if I move over here, Orion is now setting, just as it says up here, 749. So those are the really important things you need to know when you're looking at a target. Now, funny enough, years ago when I first started messing with uh, Stellarium, I couldn't figure out how to make this stuff over here just go away without some accidental clicking somewhere where there's not something. And if you're zoomed in to some areas, that can be hard. You know, you, you click around, you're like, I need that to go away. Click the right mouse button it goes away. So that takes care of, of selecting objects and deselecting objects and all of the information on the left. So next thing I find interesting is to put up labels so that I know what I'm looking at. Because for example, you know, when you just zoom in on a section of the sky, let's say Orion. So what exactly is this? Now, you know, we just did a search, that's the Orion Nebula, but let's say I didn't really know and I didn't have my constellation line zone, so I couldn't guess that that was the nebula in Orion. So what you can do is you can go over to Sky and Viewing Options, and that's this third one down right here, press F4. And from there, if you go over and to your DSO tab, I believe it is, and from here, this shows you all of the catalogs, which are basically the listings of objects, are currently owned. And this is the Messier, the NGC, and the IC, and those are the, the big ones, especially if you're just doing visual or, uh, you know, you're not really advanced in astrophotography. Those are the three you're going to be working with the most. And turn on this little checkbox, Labels and Markers. Once that's owned, you can go back and you can see 
we've got all kinds of stuff in here. We've got the Jewel of Orion. Uh, we've got the Orion Nebula here, the Coal Car Cluster, the 13th Pearl Nebula, IC 435, 434, uh, which is also the Horsehead Nebula. Uh, then you've got Casper the Friendly Ghost Nebula. And so now you can start to see things that you can go view. Yeah, here's the Seagull Nebula. And that really helps. A little beehive cluster is, is in uh, Canis Major. And you can scroll down here. The heart and dagger, dagger is in Pupus. So that's the, the basic overall gist of how to use this. There's lots more options, lots more things you can do, but that gets you up and running really, really fast. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please remember to like it and subscribe it. If you have any questions, comments, ideas for new videos, leave them down below in the comments section and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Thank you and clear skies.